Hey, this is Ravi, and in this video, I wanted to share the second strategy that you can use to grow your B2B facing business. This one will be Facebook groups. And by the end of the video, I'm going to teach you how you can basically reach a point where you're getting anywhere from 1,000 to tens of thousands of visitors and traffic on a monthly basis to your website, to your channel, wherever you're looking from targeted traffic using Facebook groups in a very, very simple way. This is a strategy that I've used for multiple businesses of mine. It always works extremely effectively and actually managed to scale it to even higher than the numbers that I gave you. So let's quickly get started. Uh, what essentially are Facebook groups? So Facebook groups, uh, as you as you know, uh, basically it's just literally like a group on Facebook. It's somewhere where people congregate around very specific ideas. Sometimes it might be an app. Sometimes it might be a community. It might be a hobby. And whatever your business is, whatever you're catering into, whether you have a productivity app, whether you're a, a marketing agency, a real estate company, there's going to be groups on Facebook for that thing. And many, 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 many of them. Some local, meaning some of them are going to be communities based in certain countries. And some of these are going to be global. So here's, uh, here's where it gets really, really interesting. So basically, when you're using groups on uh, Facebook, what you're basically able to do is to join just about as many as you like. Obviously, there's a certain limit that you can do per day, but uh, this is the process that you can go day after day after day, which means every day you can join dozens of groups and you can post in dozens of groups and that kind of racks up and accumulates. So basically imagine if every group is like a, a sort of traffic for you, then every group you join basically is more and more and more traffic uh, as you see it growing uh, almost exponentially. So the benefits of using Facebook groups are, number one, that you're going to get massive exposure. So basically, when you join uh, groups, you're going to interact with lots and lots and lots of people. And uh, a lot of people are going to see you. And some of them are going to click on your links. Some of them are going to search you up. So it just it provides a huge boost of exposure that would normally cost quite a bit of money uh, if you went the paid route style or would just not be possible if you contacted people one by one. Second biggest benefit is specific audience. So Imagine instead of targeting uh, a very large group of people and kind of hoping for the best, you're able to custom tailor and basically target a very, very specific audience when you're using groups. Uh, the reason is that, again, groups congregate around ideas. And these ideas and communities uh, could be exactly related to what you're doing, either uh, because you inferred it, meaning uh, it's a group of people buying real estate and you have a company that sells real estate, or it could be like an inference, meaning you have a, real, a really cool app that you'd like to promote for developers, and there's a group of developers that talk about development. So uh, you can really pinpoint and find a very, very specific audience. And finally, it's actually quite easy to maintain. So basically, making sure that you keep getting posts uh, working is not that hard. It's The hard part is just getting the actual posts going. So uh, let me give you some examples uh, before we move forward of how I've basically used this strategy. Uh, so one example here is uh, a post here that I uh, posted a few days ago, uh, yesterday actually. Uh, this is a post that took me, as you can see, about uh, 10 seconds to write, and it got about 160 comments, almost 100 likes on a marketing agency group. And basically what it did was, you know, I put my video here uh, on top, the video that I wanted people to watch. Um, basically, this this small post uh, that I made uh, got me about six or seven different uh, offers. Now, never mind that I'm not offering marketing services at the moment, but uh, basically my point was just to get some traffic to the YouTube channel and basically to help some people. And a lot of people contacted me. Again, I got, I got multiple offers. I got almost a thousand views on this YouTube video, which is uh, obviously that's also revenue for me. Not a lot, but you know, it's, it's always nice. Um, and these clicks could have been anything. Like if this wasn't a link to a YouTube channel, it could have been a link to, to a website or landing page. And obviously if this was a service I was currently offering, then uh, it would have been very, very, very profitable because uh, when we were running this company, it cost us about $200 to get a really, really, really solid meeting. Uh, and sell a $2,000 product. In this case, just from this one Facebook group uh, post, I got about five or six people that each told me like, hey, I'd like to have you do this service. So that just goes to show you how powerful it can be. Uh, another good example is an app of mine. So this app is called uh, BitPredict. And basically it's an app where people are able to make uh, predictions on cryptocurrency prices. And uh, what I've been able to do is I've been able to essentially scale this uh, web platform from zero to almost... Uh, 10,000 users in the first month using nothing but uh, just posting on groups. So this strategy uh, works extremely well. It's very scalable. It's very effective. And I highly, highly, highly uh, recommend that you start doing it. Now, uh, what are the downsides to actually doing this? 
So in terms of downsides, there are essentially three downsides that you want to take account of when you're starting to do this. Uh, first one is that uh, you need to be aware that your Facebook account uh, can be at risk if you use your own Facebook account for this. Uh, personally, for, in most cases, I do use my Facebook account because I know how to do it very responsibly and in a, in a good way that doesn't kind of uh, cross Facebook in the wrong way, you could say. Uh, but this does involve uh, choosing the right groups, which I'll talk about in a moment. It does involve uh, not overdoing it and basically doing your best to keep it as natural and healthy as possible. If you're not sure that you can do that, uh, what I would suggest is either that you uh, set up a Facebook account, another Facebook account, and kind of nurture it for a few months, you know, go it gradually and kind of let it behave naturally, uh, and then start a strategy. Or alternatively, just, you know, pay a bit of money and you can just buy a Facebook account that's ready and, uh, you know, good to go. So um, that's the uh, number one issue. Number two issue is uh, basically that uh, you need to have a really good uh, marketing slash writing slash communication skills to actually pull this off. So um, it's not easy to get uh, a, a really, really engaging Facebook group. Uh, you know, it's not easy to engage a lot of people. Uh, and it's even harder when you do it, to, you know, instead of like one group, if you have to do it in like multiple uh, different groups at the same time, so you have to, you know, make multiple sets of content that are engaging. And at the same time, you also have to make it in a way where all of these uh, then lead to your, uh, you know, your website or your uh, or your video. Basically, it, it's much, much harder because these also have to kind of be promotional in nature, but also be very, very subtle about it. So I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Um, so if you if you if you don't have good writing skills, if you're not a good communicator or you don't know how to engage people, it's just a skill that you have to learn. It's not that hard. Um, and the best tip that I would give you uh, would be given very soon. Uh, the rest of uh, later in the video when I explain the how to and uh, the next um, the third downside that you'd like to take uh, account of is that uh, these uh, posts would need to be maintained. So basically um, existing posts that you've already uploaded that worked really, really well. You're going to have to keep uh, finding reasons for them to, to to come back up, basically to bump them up, uh, whether it's through uh, responding to people again, whether it's through asking good questions, whether it's through having people that kind of ask questions for you. So this is all. Um, this is all a very important part of, uh, of the journey. Now, uh, in terms of the expected results, so what can you actually expect if you do this? Well, in terms of expected results, you can expect anywhere from a few dozen to a few thousand clicks on your website, uh, because uh, as I said, uh, every group here is a source of targeted traffic. Anytime somebody comments or replies, the post goes to the top, uh, which is really the, the most powerful tool in this case. And uh, also, you can expect many, many more opportunities, everything from uh, partnership opportunities to um, various people who want to work with you in, in new ways or people who want to promote you, uh, people want to get advice. Because, again, you're just getting a massive amount of exposure. So just by a numbers game uh, and, and by the fact that, again, if you are creating engaging posts, you're being viewed as a leader, uh, you are going to get those opportunities. Now, how do you actually uh, move forward with this? So how do you actually get started? Uh, number one thing you want to do is basically to uh, make a list of groups. That's the that's the number one step. Uh, you have to have a spreadsheet with a list of groups that uh, you're going to join. Uh, this is obviously the the first part. You have to get this done. Um, now, in terms of what groups you want to join, uh, there's basically three uh, main criteria that you want to judge. Number one is uh, basically more than uh, uh, one thousand uh, 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 members in the group, because the small groups are just not going to get that much traffic, so it's not worth it. Second one is uh, basically between three to um, to twenty posts uh, per day. So if it's uh, more than twenty posts per day, probably a, a crappy group where people just spam all day. And if it's less than three, then it's kind of too strict, and there's not a lot of chance that you'll get approved in terms of uh, your uh, posts. And number three is uh, good engagement. So good engagement means that if you scroll the group, and of course some groups are private, so you can't see, so you should just join and give it a try. But if it's a public group, then you can see the engagement. So you have groups where uh, you see a lot of uh, comments, likes, uh, shares, back and forth, kind of like healthy discussion. That's, that's the sign of a really, really good group. It's going to be very easy to maintain because people there actually communicate and are very active. Now, second thing you want to do to move this uh, forward is to basically submit applications. So uh, you can apply, I think, up to like 20 groups every couple of hours. Uh, that should be your, your hard limit. And uh, just uh, try applying. Again, keep a spreadsheet, very clear uh, uh, spreadsheet where you can just follow, okay, which groups did I apply to? Uh, which ones are pending? Which ones do I need to apply to? And that way you can keep things very, very organized. And finally, number three is to uh, basically create uh, uh, tailored uh, content, engaging content um, for each group. So 
Um, some content, some some groups are very similar. Like for example, you could have a, a group around a topic where there's five different groups. Just for some reason, there's five different communities, but it's the exact same topic. Well, in this case, you can just use the exact same post five times, obviously. But uh, a lot of times, you would need to create custom tailor content. So what I would suggest to do that is to basically um, go over the group post and try to get a vibe for what posts really, really work. Look for the posts that get the most comments, most likes, most engagements in general. Uh, and these are the posts that you'd like to emulate. And each group has their own uh, vibe, has their own uh, kind of like uh, style, pictures they like, types of things that they respond well to. So you want to really study every group and kind of find out what those um, really magic top performing posts are. Of course, it's a lot easier in a website like Reddit, where you can just click on the top posts and just see the best posts of all time. But in this case, again, you just need to scroll down a bit and do your own research. After that, uh, when you write the posts, make sure it provides real value. So basically, not just perceived value or value in the future. Make sure somebody who reads it actually benefits from reading it in a way that's important to them. So if it's a group about development, make sure there's actually really practical stuff that's going to help people there regarding development. Uh, same thing with pretty much any any sort of group, just make sure there's actual value. And again, you want to know what the value is because some groups, you know, they, they might be about development, but the value is just people like to make development jokes. So, and that's the value, like making people laugh. So you really want to make sure that you're providing the right value to the right to the group based on the top posts. Um, after that, you want to make sure it's engaging. So basically make sure that there's uh, either a question in it, uh, something that encourages people to respond, uh, something where people are just, it's very easy for people to just jump in and kind of like have fun in the in debate and whatever. Like just make sure there's a really good reason for people to comment. And number three is keep your marketing uh, subtle. So the the like the minimum you need, it's really enough to to, to even just say, uh, you know, just to show you an example here, it, it's really, really enough just to say like, uh, you know, uh, um, I used uh, this tool to help uh, grow, uh, let, me, uh, let me put this down, to help uh, grow my platform and then put it in, uh, in uh, brackets, just basically, this is the platform. So bit, uh, uh, bit obviously use caps to make it easier for people to kind of read the the uh, the URL. So for, for example, so for example, you you have a group about a certain tool. You can say, here's how I use this tool to grow uh, my platform, and just in parentheses the name, the URL or, or the name of the platform. And just that, just that one thing is going to be enough to drive traffic. Like you don't need to actually put a link and spam people. It's enough to just mention it. So that's how you kind of keep it very subtle. Again, you don't even have to use a URL. You can just use the name and, and that should be enough because people are going to search for you. They're going to find you. And when I do this strategy, about 80% of the traffic comes from direct engagement anyway. So 20% is just people somehow coming in directly from Facebook and 80% of people is just people searching because of it, people uh, just trying to, to write the URL and go directly to the website. Um, so that's how you, you do it. And finally, the last uh, step in this process is basically to keep the conversation going. So um, it's a good post. If uh, from the moment you post it, you start seeing almost immediately likes and comments. And uh, a good post like that would have uh, at least like five or 10 comments in the first few hours. And what you want to do is you want to kind of reply, take your time replying. And there's a good reason for it, by the way, because Facebook uh, limits how many replies you can do uh, in uh, groups to about, I think, 10 or 15 per hour. So there's actually a good reason to not reply to everybody at once. So, you know, somebody, people reply, ask you questions, uh, reply back, either give a lot of value so that, you know, so that they'll want to ask you more questions or reply back with some answers and a question or interest of your own. Um, you know, every, and let's say you have, again, a hundred groups and in each one of them, you have a different uh, uh, post, just, uh, again, small reply in each one. Obviously, one last tip is to make sure everything is extremely organized. So uh, extremely organized. So make sure that uh, everything is extremely organized. We have a spreadsheet that shows you uh, the names of groups, the posts, the, the URL to the post, so that you can always go back to them. Uh, make sure to, if there's no engagement for a few days, maybe try to bump it by just asking a question or maybe commenting with like a dot and just deleting it. Uh, do what you need to do to kind of keep the conversation going. And also, you know, finally, when a, when a group post dies, then it dies, you know, just uh, at some point, just these things dies. Sometimes people, uh, admins will remove your group. Sometimes they just die naturally. So always keep in mind that, you know, every post will uh, have its date. Uh, some will be extremely successful, some are not. And the main key thing is to diversify them. So just, uh, you reach a situation where you have uh, dozens, if not hundreds of posts across many, many, many groups. And all of them are, some are a bit active, some are very active. And that's just going to ensure that you're getting a massive, massive amount of traffic to your website every single day. So just this technique alone 
uh, could help uh, really, really grow and scale your business and at least uh, help you close the first 10 or 20 clients in your uh, B2B business. So that was me today. Uh, tune in hopefully tomorrow for episode number three of the uh, top five strategies for B2B marketing and hope you got a lot of value and feel free to ask me any questions. Thank you.